Let's listen to verse number six. Al-Nabiyyu awla bil mu'minin min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum wa ulul arhami ba'duhum awla bi ba'dhin fi kitabillahi min al-mu'minin wal muhajirin illa illa The Prophet is closer to the believers than their own selves, and his wives are their mothers, and those having mutual kinship are closer to one another, for the purpose of inheritance, than other believers and emigrants according to the Book of Allah. Unless you do some good to your friends, by making a will in their favor. This had been written in the book, The Preserved Tablet. This verse again is very important to understand. Then people when they Jews and, and other um, Christians and pagan Arabs, <coughs> they taunted Prophet that he have taken Zainab <coughs> as his daughter-in-law, who was divorced by her, uh, by his adopted son, Zayd. Um, so it was a tradition need to be broken, which was an appropriate tradition because adopted child is not your biological son. In Sharia, you cannot marry a woman who is married to your son and a man cannot marry a woman who was already married to his father. So this is a restriction. These are considered ulul arham. They are the sacred people who are considered to be either mother or daughters. Uh, there are <coughs> also uh, situations where um, we have to be very careful the one who can marry who cannot be married to this is a full Sharia so any uh, Allah says in this verse a prophet is closer uh, to the more believers from their own selves they said that he was your son and yeah, and you took his daughter as your uh, wife so Allah says no uh, prophet is uh, closer to all believers from their own soul and his, his wives or his spouses are their spiritual mother, not biological, but the spiritual mothers means they are to be respected and nobody can marry to the mother. So this is what it is. And those who are having mutual kinship are closer to one another. In other words, in the matter of inheritance. So the only inheritor will be your biological son or your daughter or your uh, living children's, uh, 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 what you call, um, uh, the, one who, uh, the one who have died, uh, their kids cannot get the inheritance, the kids. You know, if a person's son or daughter has died and left children behind, those children will get uh, inheritance in the form of that gift from the grandfather. Uh, these are the rules. Inshallah, we'll come to discuss about it. It's very complex, complex detail. Uh, who gets what? There are different places and different uh, share of each one is prescribed in the Quran. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is describing. Uh, so blood relation are more important than the adopted son. Adopted son, how do you help them? You give them from the one third will in your life as a gift, and that could be theirs. So. Uh, uh, and among the believers and those who are immigrants according to the book of Allah and and then uh, those unless you do some good to your friends that is making them a will in their favor had written in the book so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that one third is allowed so if a person adopted a child and he wants to give him something so he should give the gift in his life whatever he wants but if he wants to give inheritance inheritance is after death so he can write a will so in other words a person has a adopted son or daughter and he wants to give them he can give them everything but he cannot gift him all of it because uh, the, the real biological children will be deprived or the spouses will be deprived. So he can give them some help or whatever he wants to do. Or if, he's, if he wants to write a will, he can write one, no more than one third of the will for that child. 
uh, who could be some, uh, younger, or could be older, or whatever. And if a person wants to gift one of his biological children a gift in his life, he should write equal amount of gift to all of the children. As Prophet says, a man came to him. He said, "My wife want me to or, or uh, want me to have this younger son uh, from a new, uh, a different wife to give this house." Prophet says, "Are you writing same uh, inherit or gift for all the kids you have?" He said, "No." So Prophet says, "I cannot sign it for you." So this is what the point is that we have to be fair and just in distribution of our share. In our life, we can give both son and daughter equal amount of wealth, but if it dies uh, or, or in the will, daughter will give half of the what son get, but, be, but son get all the responsibility and daughter have no responsibility. So this half a share and full share that inshallah we'll discuss in detail to explain what the value is. So, uh, and this has been prescribed so we can not give a name to adopted son and daughter, our biological name, they belong to the biological parents. Our wives cannot become our mother or sister when they say so. If they say, uh, you, you are like wife, you are like mother, that's not true. But if he says to me, you are like my mother, that will put this person in restriction. He cannot have a relation till he does this, uh, 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 Paying the dues of uh, freeing sixty, uh, uh, freeing a slave, feeding sixty people, or fasting for sixty days, then they can establish the spousal relation. But they don't have to do another nikah or marriage. Uh, and then the prophet is closer to all the believers than their own self, their own self. So prophet is so close to us. And then his wives are our mothers. So no one can treat them without respect of a, less than a respect of a mother or more than that. And uh, the people of blood relation inheritance are brothers and sisters to each other. And they are the one who are the real inheritance of person's will. And uh, one third a person can will for the adopted children in his life, or he can give them gift in the life. So these are very clear rulings, and uh, this is what has been prescribed in the tablet. Uh, and then next, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is talking to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi about the covenant he took with him and all the prophets. Uh, listen to verse number seven. <laughs> So here's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse 7 and 8 is mentioning about the covenant he took in the world of his spirit before the creation of all the prophets and the prophets are innocent, they are free of sin because Allah has taken a covenant from them and they are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah says when we took the covenant from all the prophets in the world of his spirit when Allah gathered all the prophets and he took the covenant from them and Allah says, end with you, end wa minka. So there was a separate covenant taken from all the prophets and the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu particularly, and from the Nuha or Nuh al Islam or Ibrahim and the Musa and the Isa and the Jesus. There are five Ulul Arham. Uh, these are the considered the five prophets of uh, special significance. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala took covenant from each one of them and all the prophets. Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu is one of the highest level of the prophet among all the prophecies. And he was given a special status, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is how he asked them, "Liyas uh, alat sadiqin," so that he, Allah, may ask the truthful ones, which is the Prophet, about their truth. Wa adda lil kafirin azab an alima, and it is a, and he has prepared a painful punishment for the disbeliever. So uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is is very. Uh, very specifically mentioning that that there's a special covenant Allah took as we read in Surah uh, Al Imran wa is akhazallahu misaq al nabiyin lama ataitukum min kitabin wa hikmah thumma ja'akum rasulun musaddiqan lima ma'akum la tu'minu nabiyyi wa la tansurunna qala aqratum wa khastum ala zalikum isri qalu aqrna qala fashadu wa ana ma'akum min ash that covenant is again mentioned here in this second place in Surah uh, Al Ahzab that Allah says we took a special covenant from all the prophets about that when you will come they will have to leave their prophecy and follow you 
and become a Muslim and Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there was a special covenant was taken along with Prophet Muhammad was a Nu and Ibrahim and Musa and Isa, the Jesus and the Moses and the Abraham and the Noah. So these four prophets were mentioned here because they were special status prophets along with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them. Uh, all. So, but Prophet Muhammad is the last to come and when he come, all of the other one have to leave their prophecy and all the, what they're doing and they have to follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's listen to the verse number nine. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu dhkuru ni'matallahi alaykum idh jaatkum junoodun فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ رِيحًا وَجُنُودًا لَمْ تَرَوْهَا وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرًا O oh, you who believe, remember Allah's favor to you when the forces of the infidels came upon you, and we sent upon them a wind and the forces of angels you did not see. Allah is watchful of whatever you do. إِذْ جَاءُكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَإِذْ زَاغَتِ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرَ وَإِذْ زَاغَتِ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرَ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ Recall when they came upon you from above you and from below you, and when the eyes were distracted, and the hearts reached the throats, and you were thinking about Allah, all sorts of thoughts. <laughs> At that occasion, the believers were put to a trial and were shaken with a violent convulsion. وَإِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُّوَا Remember when the hypocrites and those having malady in their hearts were saying, Allah and his messenger did not promise us but deceitfully at وَإِذْ so verse number 9 through 12, there is a mention of the Battle of Confederate when they all came together and Muslims were in a very situation, difficult time where they could not leave the Medina city. There was no track. They were being kind of incarcerated from all the side and they were locked out, uh, locked into that situation where three sides were the mountain and the and the front was a uh, disbeliever. So Prophet commanded the digging of the trench. There's a lot, lot of detail about it. You see what I can tell you. In that situation, people were even uh, hungry and they were not having food and Prophet uh, was called in a situation where they were still digging the trench and there was a big huge rock came in and uh, nobody could break it. So Prophet used to wear his uh, his dress like a, a wrap around the waist and, and like a haram. He used to have it. So when they asked Prophet to help and Prophet came in and when he lifted up his head, he, he has three stones uh, tied to his belly. It was their way to hold the weight on the stomach so that people will not feel hungry. And Prophet had three of those, means three days he had not eaten any food. There's another uh, companion whose name was Abdullah, and he saw this and he went home and he told his wife, uh, he said that uh, Prophet has not eaten for three days. Do we have any food to feed him? So she said, yes, we have a little bit of food, but only just tell him to come in. So when he went there and he, this is the miracle happened to prophets. Um, uh, he performed a miracle there. Uh, so when he invited uh, Prophet, O oh, Prophet of Allah, uh, quietly he went to his ears and whispered that I have some food, can you come in, we can feed you. Because he was feeling bad about the Prophet. Um, so Prophet Sallallahu said, everybody come, join. Uh, today we have an invitation of, uh, uh, for dinner uh, or food at uh, Abdullah's house. When he, he rushed and went to home and he told his wife, do you know that he invited everybody? I thought he will come with a couple of people. Uh, she said, are you sure he invited them? She said, he said, yes. So she goes, okay, uh, if he invited, he will take care of it. Let's have a trust in Prophet. When Prophet arrived and he said, do not open the pot, do not do anything. And he uh, 
he said till I come in and he took uh, a little bit of his saliva and put it in the food and made some dua and supplication and the food becomes sufficient for 1500 people were fed from that food and it never finished and there was enough for everybody to eat and take with them so uh, that was one of the miracle performed so with the rock Prophet ﷺ, when he went there and he struck the rock, nobody could break it. Multiple of the uh, axes were broken. Um, so um, Prophet, when he struck it, a lightning came out from there. And he said, Allahu Akbar. Then second time he struck, another lightning came in. Third time he struck, the another light came in, which I believe I've mentioned it before. So um, the first time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the promise that Muslim will uh, open Jerusalem. And uh, Basra and uh, and Persia and Roman Emperor will be uh, Empire will be under Muslims' rule. So the hypocrites heard this statement and they mocked. They said, "You can't even go for toilet outside, and uh, you're talking about ruling the other places uh, of uh, the superpower of that time." So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blesses whatever He does. So there were a lot of miracles happen in those places in those times. And these are one of the important miracles happen. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that at that time when you were in so much fear that your heart were coming up to your throat and your eyes were kind of were rolling over with the fear. And uh, those hypocrites, they were doubting and Allah and his messenger. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the victory to Muslims. So you have to be brave and you're steadfast. Whatever Allah wills will bring to us. Let's listen to the verse number 13. وَإِذْ قَالَ الطَّائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ يَا أَهْلَ يَثْرِبَ لَا مُقَامَ لَكُمْ فَارْجِعُوا وَيَسْتَأْذِنُ فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمُ النَّبِيَّ يَقُولُونَ إِنَّ بُيُوتَنَا عَوْرَةٌ وَمَا هِيَ بِعَوْرَةٌ and when a group of them said, O people of Yathrib, Medina, there is no place for you to stay, so go back. And a group of them was seeking permission to leave from the Prophet, saying, In fact our homes are vulnerable, while they were not vulnerable, they wanted nothing but to escape. وَلَوْ دُخِلَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَقْطَارِهَا ثُمَّ سُئِلُوا الْفِتْنَةَ لَآتَوْهَا وَمَا تَلَبَّسُوا بِهَا إِلَّا يَسِيرًا And if it, Medina, is entered by the enemy in their presence from all its sides and they are asked to join the mischief, they would readily commit it and would not remain in them, their homes, but for a short while. وَلَقَدْ كَانُوا عَاهَدُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ قَبْلُ لَا يُوَلُّونَ الْأَدْبَاءُ وَكَانَ عَهْدُ اللَّهِ مَسْئُولًا Despite that they had already made a covenant with Allah, that they would not turn their backs, and a covenant with Allah has to be answered for. أُلَّيْ <laughs> So these three verses are telling about the hypocrites' behavior, and then it says when a group, when a, when a group of them, which is the people of Yathrib, they, these are the hypocrites and disbelievers in Medina, they wanted their friends and brothers and families to leave with them, and they wanted to escape because they saw a big army surrounding the country or their place. So they thought that will save them. And Yathrib is the old name of city. Uh, when Prophet arrived, it was changed to Medina to Nabi, the city of the Prophet in Arabic, Medina means city. And they would not want to call it city of Prophet because they were so much uh, in hate, those disbelievers. So they say Yathrib. And as a Muslim, we should not call Medina Yathrib because Yathrib means city of sick, sickness and illness. When Prophet arrived there, there were a lot to be uh, viral or other form of sickness. And now it become the city of healing and all the diseases were moved out of there. So there is no place for you to run, so go back. So they're saying that go to your home or leave the city and go to somewhere else, hide yourself. And these are the people when they are seeking permission to leave, they are the hypocrites because they were supposed to stand and fight and defend Islam and a Muslim in the city, even though they were in agreement with the Prophet. And what happened was that Allah is mentioning that had they uh, saw a victory, they would have 
come to join you. If they saw the overpowering of the disbelievers, they would have joined them and they would have taunted and mocked you and insulted you and they would have uh, complained about your behavior. You didn't do this, you didn't do that. So this is something very uh, interesting. This is mentioned about their act character. And when, if you had win and they had not participated, they would have said, oh, we were hiding outside. So if they attack on you, we would have come and attack from the behind and we would have been defending you. So all these kind of excuses these people will make with you. So do not fall for their excuses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding Muslim that stay firm, stay with the Prophet, do not leave your faith and a hardship come, stay fast in your ground and Allah will give you victory if you're together and united because victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah wills you to live, he will give you life. If Allah wills you to be dead, he will take you as a martyr. And Muslims have two ways to exist. Either he lives as a, as a, a ghazi, the one who is defending for the cause of Allah or die as a man of faith. And this was something which Roman and Persian uh, did not understand about Muslim when they attacked their country, that these people are more glad and happy and looking forward to die for the cause of Allah than live to be wealthy and pr protected and all those kind of things. So this is something very foreign concept for all the nations. And as we know, uh, how the uh, President Bush had said about Muslim that they wish to die and we want to live. So these kind of things happen with the non-believer and the Muslims. Uh, let's listen to verse number 16.